And that really is the art of marriage, is learning to stop being selfish and start being a servant. And that's not a degree you can get in college. That's not a major you can take. But you but can take underwater that, basket weaving as well as professional protesting to make sure that people do not come on campus with whom you disagree. Choices. So there's a, a balancing act. This was a little research project we did some years ago. I just want to figure out what are the primary objections of the unchurched, those that have never been, the de church that have left. And so we hired, I've got it written down, GFK, this research group, they called 900,000 people, random digital dial, had 70,000 conversations, boiled it down to a list of 18 to 44 year olds, 1,000 people, and male, female, young, white, black, old, rich, young, You can everybody. take your pick. There's infinite genders your and pick. races now, yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, et cetera, bucket. Everybody, <laughs> number one, same thing, the main objection was intolerance. Okay. That Christianity is an intolerant religion. And then I, I wrote it down. Uh, it then plays itself out in eight arenas. So the number two issue was sexuality. Number three was politics. Number four was morality or hypocrisy. Number five was spirituality. Number six was gender. Number seven was scripture or authority. Number eight is economics or greed. And number nine is counseling or, or relevance and irrelevance. And, and what our research showed, massive project, there is only one objection, and that's Christianity's intolerant, and then it plays itself out in different arenas. Right. And you'll see that blowing up and trending on social media and such, where it's a political issue or a moral issue or a spiritual issue or a gender issue or a sexuality issue. But ultimately, those are just like eight octagons that the same fight keeps happening over the issue of intolerance. And that's the primary objection from everyone is that uh, Christian belief structure is just simply intolerant, therefore it's unacceptable. And how do you deal with that criticism? Because th the reality is it is intolerant of some behaviors, of some practices that are self-destructive, but that doesn't, it's, it, it, it's, it's, first off, it's not even comparable to, let's say, some religions like Islam, which we talk about a lot. You're not lopping hands yeah. off. But how do, you how do you balance that, again, with being authentic, saying, well, okay, this is true. Th these, these are closed-handed rules. These are open-handed rules. Uh, and explaining that to someone who just blankets you with intolerance. Well, and I would say, uh, first of all, the intolerant is on the left and the right. I yes. mean, it's it doesn't matter, you know, who you check for your political persuasion that it exists on the left and the right. And what we found is actually the dictionary definition of tolerance has changed. It used to be, you think I'm wrong, I think you're wrong. We sort of endure with one another. The dictionary definition has now changed to we're both right and we celebrate one another. Right. which is what you see in social media. Unless I wave every flag and march in every parade, I'm intolerant. Right. And so, you know, really what we have now is a, a change to where um, unless you agree with everyone that everyone is right and everything is okay, you're intolerant. And the truth is the God of the Bible is loving and loving is more important than tolerating because tolerance says there's nothing wrong or needs to change with you. Love says I care about you and I want a relationship, but I want my love to change you. And the God of the Bible loves, he, does, he tolerates you, he'll take you as you are, but he loves you too much to let you stay as you are. So Christianity is about change and repentance, and God is binary. There's heaven, there's hell, there's right, there's wrong, there's God, there's the devil, there's truth, there's lies, and God doesn't just look at it all and say, who am I to judge? God feels very comfortable judging. And then the question becomes, does God, does a parent, does anyone have the right to say, no, Right. that's wrong? Right. You know? And if you do, and if you're a parent, you got kids. No, I do not. I do not have children. All right, I've got five, so I got us both covered. I got a full <laughs> suburban. But one of the first things you learn as a parent is if, if you love your kids, at some point you got to say no. Right. Exactly. Well, and everyone has a line of no. I mean, we even say that right now with the hashtag totally. me too, right? The hashtag we're going. Everyone we're going. Hold on. Of course, everyone agrees that sexual abuse is wrong. Now. The traditionalist Christians have a line long before that saying, here are certain sexual parameters that we believe to be appropriate for any relationship, for which you get roundly mocked, like Mike Pence even saying, I'm not going to go out to dinner alone with a woman. Everyone has a no line, whether it's, I don't go out to dinner alone with a woman, or, or just, sexual abuse. Or even take, even take the marriage issue, right? Right. I mean, is it two people? Is it three people? Do they have to be over 18? Can they be under 18? The question is not, is there a line? The question is, where is it drawn? Right. And anybody who gets morally outraged has a line somewhere that they feel has been crossed. Right. And that can be political left and or right. So the question is not, is a line drawn? The question is, who has authority to draw the line? And number two, where is the line to be drawn? That's, right. that's always the issue. And culturally, we keep having this war that wants to have every line be in pencil. 
Right. Yes, exactly. And you made it, you touched on a really good point. We've talked about this. It's almost sort of the, the, the female rom-com equivalent to pornography. The, this myth that, well, love means that you love everything about me and accept me exactly for who I am completely right now. That's just not reality. No one is perfect at this moment. We hear that all the time. You're perfect the way you are, which is antithetical to what we believe as Christians, but it's also just non-practical. If we actually yeah. believed that, no one would ever have a reason for self-improvement. And that's a big thing, I think, when young people get married. Um, I see that with a lot of friends who get married, this struggle of women particularly saying, well, my husband would love everything just for who I am. And a guy going, I, I love my wife but this really grates me a little bit. Um, why do you think that's been allowed to permeate the, 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 this sort of cultural ethos and it's just accepted? Well, the, you know, the Bible says something radical and that's that two people become one. And I'll tell you, that takes a bit of work. Yes. I mean, if your life is just train tracks parallel, you have your life, I have my life, and I'll see you on vacation and date night, that's, you know, that's a little easier. But if you're actually gonna be one, you're gonna share one bed, one last name, one bank account, worship one God, you know, start one family, leave one legacy for two people that are innately selfish. And that's what you find in marriage. You think, boy, this person I married is selfish and they're thinking the exact same thing. And you're both right. Yeah. And so it takes a lot of work to become a servant. And that really is the art of marriage is learning to stop being selfish and start being a servant. And that's not a degree you can get in college. That's not a major you can take. Uh, that's not a minor you can take, you know, how to be humble and serve people. No, we don't live in a world that that, that, that holds that up as any sort of value. But, but you but can take underwater that, basket weaving as well as professional protesting to make sure that people do not come on campus with whom you disagree. Choices. So there's a, a balancing act. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that I mean, that's but that's the world we live in. We live in a world where, you know, it is not about humility. It's not about sacrifice. It's not about service. And everybody's miserable. And my point is, it's not working. Right which then creates an interest in, is there transcendent law? Is there a God who's behind all of this? Does God have a way that's better than our way? Is it a good idea to draw some lines and say no somewhere? Because if your thing isn't working, maybe your thing isn't right. Final question for you, and then we have to go. We have a lot of young male viewers, a lot of young female viewers, but particularly a lot of young male viewers who write us a lot, who, fe who feel lost. One thing you've touched on, and like you talk about the media, totally fall. This is, this is not the Mark Driscoll that a lot of people would read about on the internet. Um, you've really touched on this false idea of machismo and actual positive traits of masculinity that we should reinforce yeah. and the difference there. And can you explain that to some people who, who are watching? I, I, I do my best as a ham and egger, but I've always, when I talk about, listen, being a man, when I talk about being a good leader, when I talk about uh, being a hu good husband, that is all inclusive of being a servant, being somebody, I mean, to lead, to protect is to serve. And I feel like a lot of Christians, yourself included, have been misrepresented. Here's the false machismo sort of archetype. And then what a positive male role model would be. What would you say to young men out there? Well, that's a layup. His name is Jesus, man. I mean, the most influential person in the history of the world, more books written about, more songs sung to, more lives devoted toward anyone who has lived in the history of the world. And so you're looking at the most significant person is a young male who was a virgin. I mean, just that in and of itself. I mean, he's, he's in his early 30s and he's a virgin. So today we'd add that to the list of miracles. You know, <laughs> but if, if you're a dude who's looking for a role model, God became a man. He went through the puberty years. He went through the teen years. He went through the 20 something years. All of his friends were getting married. He stayed single and he wasn't wasting his time. He wasn't, a, was Jesus strong? Absolutely. Strongest person who's lived in the history of the world. Was he truthful? Most truthful person who's lived in the history of the world. Did he have healthy relationships with women? Some of his closest friends like Mary and Martha were single women that he had very close, friendly relationships with, but they were not immoral. They were not sexual. They were not inappropriate. Um, and Jesus knows how to give a punch. He knows how to take a punch. And so, you know, for me, it's like, if a young guy can't just sort of see the obvious that the Bible's about Jesus, and if you're looking for a role model, use the same one who's been working for thousands of years. There is no better, there is no better option. There is no better plan. And and so I think I think Jesus makes sense for everyone, but especially for a young man, that's where you got to start. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good example. Even like we said to people who are secularists out there, if you just considered an Aesop fable as the first step, all right, that's let's let's go with that. That's a good jumping off point. Also, wasn't a big fan of the temples, turned over some tables. So not a weak man. I bet you he did his deadlifts or at least I, rack pulls. I was told Pat Robertson was the strongest man in the world. So now he I'm did say he could leg press fourteen hundred pounds, but I know that yeah. those numbers can be confusing. There's a, weird there's a pulley involved. Uh, okay. All right, yeah, we, somebody somebody missed the decimal. Yeah, yeah exactly. Thanks for the- Hey, if you like this video, subscribe, hit the notification bell, or if you want to continue to enjoy free content, support us at lottowithcredit.com slash mug club, where you get the full nightly show, an hour, every day free, along with all of our friends' content. If not, you don't want to do any of those things. You're probably just here, you're watching me seething. You came here to hate watch. That being said, the internet was created for people like you.